Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm not sure exactly when you're watching this, but I am very glad that you are. My name is Caitlin Walsh. I've been asked by the organizers of Global Cred to talk a little bit about translation and interpreting careers and how we might introduce and excite our students about careers in language. Um, I am a professional translator. I'm certified by the American Translators Association in French to English translation, and I also work in German to English. I've been doing this for about 30 years, and about for, for about 20 years, I've been teaching the next generation of translators and interpreters at a local college here in Washington State. So I've spoken at many language educator gatherings over the past few years about translation and interpreting careers in general. And in particular about our need to up our game in terms of preparing an increasing number of students to become qualified interpreters and translators. Today I'm going to focus on the growth in the interpreting industry and the skills need to work in it. The United States translation and interpreting industry is worth about 50 billion by all accounts, and that's an increasing number. Um, it continues to grow even in a time when we're seeing shrinking and retraction because of the COVID crisis. In fact, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics predicts 20% growth from 2019 to 2029, which is much faster than the average for all occupations and considerably faster for me, other media and communications workers. So like world language educators, translation and interpreting professions are experiencing shortages in new talent that to replace an aging workforce and to deal with the increasing demand. The reason for this demand is very clear when we look at demographics of our own country which drives demand things like access to services for LEPs, which are limited English proficiency. Um, they make up about 10% of working age adults. That's 19 million people, as well as the demand to attract and provide services to customers. Think cable companies, cell phone providers, any place that you've heard, you know, press two for Spanish. For both here in the US and abroad, um, if we look at our top trading partners and look at which countries are represented in the actual exhibit hall, for example, we have a real clear idea of who our trading partners are and why we need to have language investment. Now, this is all part of what was termed the global talent gap in a 2014 survey of US and global Fortune 2000 companies. 21% of companies reported difficulty in managing and integrating diverse teams due to a lack of global talent, that international perspective and understanding. And 14% actually reported a loss of business opportunities. That's money that didn't get made because of a lack of world language skills. It's also interesting to most students to know that if they're interested in computers and language, there's room in there for computational linguistics who are the driving force behind machine translation. They're in high demand too. And these jobs are not just any jobs. These are good paying jobs. The data here from the ATA, American Translators Association, shows that after about three years of professional practice, earnings jump to a solid level. ATA data also shows that some of our more experienced and highly specialized translators regularly earn six figures. In addition, independent contracting, which comprises about 70% of practicing translators and interpreters, offers lifestyle advantages that have traditionally appealed to women and which are very appealing to under 30s. There are some lifestyle advantages flexibility of work, work hours, which allows for other passions as well as family obligations. And self-employment is also really attractive to a generation that has very little interest in seeing their work benefit already wealthy corporations or CEOs. 
The civil rights aspect of providing language access to marginalized communities is especially appealing to heritage language speakers and anybody else in the idealistic generation. So what I wanna to bring to you today is information that our students may need to hear. It might be a key moment for them as it was for me when a French teacher mentioned that translation was a real career. I also know from teaching translation students for 20 years now that it's an attractive career for people looking to step out of language teaching. The first thing I want them to know is what I just talked about. This is a growth industry with that 20% growth from 2019 to 2029 and that multilingual workers, whether or not they're translators or interpreters, earn 20 to 30% more than their monolingual peers. And this is from a, joint, a JNCL study from April, 2014. And the second thing I wanna make sure that we do is make students aware of the knowledge, skills, and abilities that they need to pursue a career in translating and interpreting. And also talk to you as their teachers about what kinds of classroom materials and activities we can do to support this kind of acquisition. So first up is foundational. It's pretty obvious that you need to be fluent in at least two languages and their cultures, because language, of course, doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists in a cultural context. So language learners need to strive for really in-depth knowledge of slang, colloquialisms, all the nuances of their second languages, comparable to someone raised with that language from their childhood. So we're talking about a very high level. They need to understand enough about written language to understand the purpose and the audience of a document, all within that cultural context and perspective. Almost all successful translators and interpreters have one thing in common. They have spent significant amounts of time in the country of their second language. Not just six weeks, not just 12 weeks, but six months, a year, three years, five years, significant amounts of time. So as teachers, the way we can support this kind of acquisition is to make sure that there are plenty of opportunities for reading comprehension, assignments at many different levels. So even beginners can begin to understand documents, even if they don't know that they already know things. Cognates are really handy for these things. For culture, we can't forget TV programs, streaming services, cultural artifacts that we bring into class, the food that we share. All of these things are really important to place the language in its context because it doesn't live without it. And of course, we as teachers and parents, advocates, uh, department chairs, anybody who has a say in these matters to try to make study abroad more common, more, more the rule than the exception. Not always easy, but it's something to certainly strive for. Students also need to have a solid foundation that comes from a good general education in addition to their language skills. So successful translators usually read a lot, have many interests and enjoy reading and learning and about new and obscure subjects, often manifested by multiple university degrees. Translators and interpreters help experts communicate. So subject knowledge and terminology knowing the lingo is really key. If you want to know what you're thinking about what I'm talking about, we're talking about things like legalese. That's not English, even though it's written in English, right? So it's nice to be able to, in the classroom, use the language that we've got to help students learn about things that they might not other learn, otherwise learn or to reinforce learning that's happening in other courses. Um, for them to do a little deeper dive into a subject that might tickle their fancy. That'd be very cool. It's also helpful to give them research exercises using foreign research engines and references. You know, dictionaries might be arranged differently. Right? For translators in particular, excellent writing skills are a must. Good translators are excellent writers in their first language. 
their native language usually. But only a detail-oriented translator is really able to produce the quality of translation necessary to guarantee repeat business from clients. Sloppy work can be very bad for business, not to mention things like property damage, poor translation of an operating manual, or even loss of life, poor medical interpreting, for example. So it's very helpful for students to give them things like spot the difference exercises for both visual clues, oral clues, written clues. And of course, we all know that the best way to be an excellent writer is to read, read, and read. Now, if that wasn't enough, we also know that we have to have terrific computer skills as well as a willingness to continue to embrace and learn new technology. In just a few decades that I've been working, we've moved from using typewriters and paper dictionaries to the internet with connected computers and the clouds running advanced tools. Interpreters have ditched paper calendars and notepads for using tablets and smartphones. And of course, now we're all sitting in front of video conferencing like it's been around forever when 10 years ago, it was unheard of. So as teachers, we can help students develop these skills by requiring students to turn in assignments by following technical guidelines, give them really specific instructions and see if they can follow them. They're digital natives, they'll probably figure it out. You can also have students try out those free online translators, Google and Bing, compare it with human translation or have them try to post edit the machine output and see what has to be done and see whether it's good and where it falls short. Business skills are at the top of the list as well, including things like marketing, negotiating rates, pricing, and time management. Now, the majority of translators in the US are freelancers, which means they have to market themselves to translation companies and direct clients. Successful translators have found ways to market themselves so they stand out from others. They know how to negotiate fair rates and they've learned how to manage their time in such a way that they can balance their lives and still make those deadlines. As teachers, we can help them with exercises and self-awareness. How fast can you type? How long does it take you to read something? Knowing something about how fast you are and what you're good at. We can also structure assignments to allow for a certain amount of self-motivation and failure, right? Think of an assignment with a deadline that's unexpectedly early. Latecomers are gonna discover that the deadline is passed before they've even got started. It's a great exercise in self-awareness. And then there are the famous soft skills, which we usually call communication skills but there's a, a myriad of little pieces in here. We've got to be able to successfully interact with colleagues, clients, project managers, using email, the telephone. Yes, it's still use the telephone, chat, networking in person at professional conferences, sharing information like we do now. Translators consult each other regularly about terminology conundrums, software problems, business practices, and ethics. So it's fun to bring these kinds of things into the classroom in the forms of case studies, for example, codes of ethics. Uh, these idealistic teenagers love sinking their teeth into these great rule, rule books that somehow get messy when you bring humans into the picture. And this is a resource that ATA can certainly help with. So as I just mentioned, the American Translators Association, which is at www.atanet.org, has many, many materials designed for world language educators and students at every level. Um, obviously, we have a great deal of depth of research. We have our um, translation studies publications through Benjamin Publishing. These are academic titles on all sorts of translation studies areas from terminology to localization to basic theory and to practice. These provide a sound research-based foundations for translation and interpreting program. 
In addition, since 2013, we've had a division of educators, which is one of 18 special interest divisions in ATA. It's open to members who are connected to education and training of the next generation of professional translators and interpreters. It's highly recommended. There's a lot of curriculum sharing going on at that level. ATA also has a school outreach program where we bring experienced professional translators into the classroom from kindergarten age all the way up to grad students. We bring translation and interpreting careers to life for students and we let them pepper us with any question they can think of. Speakers are also available for things like career days as well as teacher in-service days if you've got a, a nice world languages faculty that would like to work on this together. And finally, we have the ATA Savvy Newcomer blog, which as it sounds is aimed at the newcomer, primarily the student, but many of us as teachers are also newcomers ourselves. And it helps to have that, that newcomer viewpoint when we tackle different subjects. Um, there are a lot of student accounts of translation and interpreting programs from everything from certificate to grad programs, which might be of interest to high school kid students who are thinking about their next steps in college, um, to things like business strategies and the latest technology that we use as translators. There are also a few um, translated blog posts if you want to have some parallel texts to work with for comprehension exercises in your class. Now, the American Translators Association, even though it's near and dear to my heart, is not the only one working to connect learners to careers in translating and interpreting in your classroom and career centers. Um, other sources of information include uh, GALA, which is the Globalization and Localization Association, which is an international organization that supports localization programs worldwide. And that's the translation and adaptation of software to specific locales specific markets across the globe. Together with ATA, GALA has put together an online directory of educational institutions that provide education and training from the industry. And that's everything from distance learning certificates to PhD programs in, so, in translation studies. Actual, obviously, many of us are familiar with their offerings, has a great in, uh, career information website called um, Lead with Languages. And there's information on translating and interpreting careers there as well, including specifics about things like medical interpreting and criminal justice. Uh, the newest program, the newest kid on the block, is the ALC Bridge, which is part of the Association of Language Companies, so very commercially oriented, but working to connect students to jobs to create a pipeline for employers and educators, students and um, job offers, bringing them all together in one place so that we're all on the same page in bringing these people into the profession. Um, there are already several webinars on demand. I taped one just yesterday and that's up there as well as job postings. So for students who are ready to get their feet wet, there are also some internships among those job postings. So that's all I've got for you right now, but I hope this provides you with a little inspiration and a lot of information that you can help to shape the next generation of language professionals. If you have questions or comments, please do feel free to reach out to me. My email address is right here, as well as my Twitter handle. And I'll try to tag things with, um, with the global cred hashtag for this session, certainly, as well as LangChat, because I know that's where y'all hang out. Thank you so much for your attention and have a great rest of day for you. Bye-bye.